Welcome to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your hosts, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Wolf. I'm here with my co host, Joe Fear, because he forgot my name already. I Joe guess. Fear. Yeah, yeah, I forgot his name, so I had to have him fill it in for me. Right. Um, today, we've got a very, very awesome guest on our show. Indeed. He goes by the name of Brad Spencer. I don't know what his real name is, but that's the name he goes by. He's a digital <laughs> entrepreneur. He owns 8020productcreation.com. Uh, he helps teach people how to create their own products online um, to create consistent cash flow. And he sold over $2 million in digital assets doing this stuff. So we're super, super excited. He's got some uh, a cool system, a cool process that he's going to teach with us today. And um, I can't wait to dive in. So thanks so much for joining us today, Brad. Hey, Brad. Awesome, man. Good to be here, guys. <laughs> I, I love it. I'm so pumped. You, you guys know how big of a fan I am of, uh, of everything you guys are doing. So this is going to be uh, pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so let's go ahead and, and just, you know, we like to get straight into the meat with this show. Um, so your website is 8020 product creation. And today you're talking about your three letter check down to maximize success on any new project or business. This is sort of the, the, the subject line title that you suggested. So, um, let's go ahead and dive right into this. And, um, why don't you tell us what that means? Awesome, man. Well, so, so one of the things that I, I like to do, like I'm a big fan of the 80, 20 rule, uh, and it's, it's really run my life for a really long time. And, and, you know, everything I've ever done that I've been successful at has been because I either deliberately or accidentally took advantage of the nature of that, uh, principle, which, you know, I think everybody, a lot of people know what that means, but just in case you don't, uh, it means 20% of your efforts lead to 80% of your results. Now, uh, a couple years back, I uh, read a great book by uh, Perry Marshall called 80-20 Sales and Marketing. And one of the big yeah. concepts that he was the first person I've ever read that actually had ever articulated this. But when I first heard the rule, I was like, well, what if you did 80-20 squared, uh, which means 4%, which is 80% of, you know, of each of them. It's on top of each other, if that makes sense for everybody. Uh, 4% leads to about 64% of your results. And so what ends up happening is um, <clears throat> I, I kind of took advantage of that and everything I've ever built, uh, whether it was uh, brokering webinars or you know creating products or creating webinars, creating little products, you know whatever it was been, it's always been what are the key things that move the ball down the field. So one of the things that I do uh, with that is that, you know, every business really functions the same way. There's three factors that go into every business. And it's, uh, I, I abbreviate it as LCF. And L stands for lead generation. C stands for the conversion. And then the F is fulfillment. So one of the things you have to do with that is uh, is just remember that. And, and so what I'm going to talk to you guys uh, about really is uh, – just how I do that, and how I check it down. But, you know, the big thing about that is, is, you know, the core principle that we need to get on, on, on the record anyway, is that really 4% of what you do leads to most of your results. Now, I actually think it's more like 4% of what you do leads to like 90% of your income. Yeah. Uh, that's what I find, uh, to be true. But that's really uh, that's really the core that drives my business, and so everything I do is templatized, systemized, outsourced. You know that sort of stuff that you know a lot of people talk about. But principle, you know, I before I get started, I run through a check down uh, that prevents me from getting distracted because you know how it is. You know, you guys, you know, learn something new and then you dive into it for a day, and that's like, oh crap! Like I've spent like twelve hours on this and I haven't got anything done. I mean, right. I'm sure you guys have. You know, I, I've done that many times in my day. Uh, and so what I created was a little system to follow that kind of checks that natural exuberance that all of us as entrepreneurs have uh, and focuses you on the critical few um, projects that actually make a difference for whatever you're trying to achieve. Sounds good, man. Let's let's yeah. crack into it. And then just to recap really quick, it was lead sure. generation, conversion yep. and fulfillment. Which yeah. And if you look. Yeah, if look at every business, like look at every business and when you break it down to the nutshell, whether it's pharmaceuticals on the one hand to like a digital product business to a local restaurant, they all have those three things right. in common. Every business does. And so once you get that, you can really analyze every business and kind of isolate what's the important stuff that goes into that business. How do they get customers? How do they just make people want their product and then how they actually deliver what they said they will? You know, that's really business in a nutshell, no matter what business you're in. Right. Uh, at the end of the day. I love it. That's great. Yeah. Cool. Let's continue then. 
Sweet. So, so, you know, the big thing with this, you know, and, 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 you know, we'll just dive into, to what, you know, that, that's the basic idea. So, so once you kind of get that in your business, like everybody has like, uh, you know, those things and whenever you're starting a new project, whether it's, you know, doing a new launch or, you know, creating a new service, whatever it is, you know, what I always like to do, and I, I do this with a lot of people when they call me and they ask me for help, usually they've messed one of these things up or they don't have a good answer. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're confused or stuck, right? This is the way you get unstuck, but you basically do this before you get into something so that you don't get stuck. I mean, that's the whole idea, right? right? So what I always tell people to do is if you list the three things out, like how are you, you know, when you're starting a new product, like when you guys do a new course, you know, let's say you might, uh, you might use, uh, how are we going to get our customers and people to see the course? Well, we're going to email our list. Okay. That's a common one. You know, mm -hmm. how are we going to convert them? Maybe it's a sales letter. Maybe it's a KST since you're the, the art of the KST, which, uh, by the way, we're using and, uh, getting ready to uh, launch this so month. Cool. Yeah. 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 I love that. It's probably like the number single biggest thing I've gotten the from the newsletter tutorial for those who yeah. don't know. And, and once yeah. you do it, we'll have to bring you back on for a case study episode. Heck yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah, we'll do it. We'll do a podcast episode that is a KST and then we'll sell a product on the KST. So it'll be like the matrix or something Some like that. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Cool. Right. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's where I always ask people. So you guys might say, oh, how are we going to convert them? Video, uh, KST, something like that. And then how are we going to fulfill? What's the, what's the mechanism where we're going to do that? So what I always tell people is list out those things, you know? And so the basic thing of the check down, this is where, you know, you use, and, and I'll give you guys something for the show notes so you can link to something like a, I'll, cool. I'll create Thank like you. a view only Google doc or something that people can use and repeat this process. But, um, I always have them, people list them out. And then I ask, you know, on a one to 10 scale and, you know, be honest with yourself, where are you at with that strategy? So like what I find a lot of times, everyone's like, Oh yeah, I'm really excited. You know, I'm, I want to, I want to kick butt and, you know, do this new thing and yada, yada, yada. And they're rambling on and on and on and on. And, and three, two out of the three things they've never done before. Like they're like, Oh yeah, we're going to do a webinar at like a thousand bucks and or something like that. And it's like, have you ever done a webinar? And they're like, well, no, but I've seen all these other people doing webinars, so I'm going to do it too. Mm -hmm. And so they end up getting that distraction, right? So I always tell people, you know, rate your skills. Like if you're going to do email marketing, a KST, and then like do a class, if that was the three things that you, you know, the trap, the lead generation, conversion and fulfillment strategies that you decided was the best one for you, rate it on a one to 10 scale. And so a lot of times, most people, I mean, me, I always go for, you know, stuff that I'm really good at and I just repeat it forever. But, you know, I know there's a lot of creative entrepreneurs that are all out there trying new stuff all the time and it kind of scratches that itch. So, you know, what happens is, is a lot of times you might have like really good skills with two things, but not one of them. Mm. So what I always tell people is like, let's say you've got, you know, I'm an eight email marketer. I'm a, maybe a five on, you know, doing webinars. I've done a couple of them, but I'm not great. And then like, I'm great at teaching content. Like, you know, I know you guys really are good at creating content. So right. you guys might give yourself a 10 there and like an eight in email marketing, but maybe you're trying to get better at webinars right, right now. You're a five. So then what I tell people is you've got an eight, a five and a 10. So most people are like, yeah, let's go for it. Well, I don't do that. Mm. I don't take on any project until I can get a seven or higher on all three things. Interesting. Uh, the, tri the triple sevens. I almost gave you guys that as the name for the episode, the triple seven <laughs> method. We'll use that uh, as the image or something like that. Just to... Yeah. yeah. I, just, I just don't want Boeing suing me, you know, because they own the triple seven. You know, that's why I didn't. I chose like Vegas, <laughs> right? With the slot machines. A company can own a number. <laughs> I didn't know that. We I, I, own the I, I, trademark I on the number 777. Right. I, I, I don't know. Like, you know, <laughs> they got 767, 47, you know, so on and so forth. So um, so anyways, what what I do is the, the key part of this is ju just the awareness of, of sitting down and doing this. It sounds so simple, right? And it's something that like it, it's a good check valve, you know, like in football, they have like the check downs mm -hmm. uh, that they run through in case the primary guys are locked up with defenders. You know, and I was explaining this to somebody today, like this is the the last guy, you know, you know, the the screen pass out to the running back or whatever, yeah. that this prevents you from starting something. Because the biggest thing is, you know, the things that destroy wealth, you know, I'm all about cash flow. So like, I'm not really super interested in, you know, giant windfall paydays. I mean, I'll take them when they come, but I design everything to be like a surge and residual model where you have a big surge of income whenever you promote something heavy and then continuity consistently. Of some sort. Yeah. Well, yeah, or, or it just instantly sells because there's traffic going to it every day, you know. It. So it's even yeah. it's a one sale. Just yeah, evergreen basically, right? Mm -hmm. So um we like that word. Thing, 
<laughs> yeah, I know, right? We all do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that that's the thing with uh, distraction and dilution are the two things that destroy wealth, right? If you look at every business that fails or, you know, business that starts off good and then kind of loses its way, it's usually because of distraction or di- dilution. Right. And so if you per- if you use this check down method and you get a seven on each of them, the odds of you succeeding in that project are almost, you know, 90 percent plus. Like I really I mean, and I only say that because it's really 100 percent, but, you know, nothing's 100 percent sure. perfect in the world. So it's basically you're going to you're going to succeed. So what happens if you're a five or a three or something and you really want to do something right? What I always tell people is the two B's buy or borrow someone else's experience. So this gives you the kind of like, you know, pressure release valve to say, okay, well, we're an eight you know, an eight, a five and a 10, let's say in the example that I gave you a minute ago, well, who is really good at webinars? Whose experience can we borrow or who can we pay to consult to get like a template or a system or, you know, buy somebody's course, something like that to raise that from maybe a five up to a seven mm-hmm. and we can use something and model it. So it's very simple. And, and what happens is, is that when you, when you think this way, you're thinking longer term because you're taking more of a systems approach. And until you get all these things checklisted, I mean, it's not a coincidence if you think about it, that nuclear power plants, airplanes, uh, nuclear weapons, all these things are run on checklists. You know, I don't know if you guys have read the checklist manifesto, but oh yeah, we have it on his uh, bookshelf. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that's the same principle, right? Like everything is run on checklists and there's a reason. And this is like really kind of a check on that natural exuberant energy, especially for, us younger guys, it seems to be more common with us younger guys than older guys. I don't know if it's true, but, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually very, you know, when I, when people used to approach me with brokering, one of the reasons why I was pretty good at it is cause I, I did stuff like this with, with, you know, webinars or whatever deals I was working with and everybody thinks their thing is the best. Right. Um, and if you don't think it's the best, you shouldn't be selling it. So like I, I, I automatically disqualify anyone who doesn't think their product is the best at what it does. Right. Cause it's like, then why are you selling it if you don't think it's the best? Mm-hmm. Uh, and why sure. would anyone else think it's the best? Well, it's if a you waste don't... of time all around for yeah, you. It's... Yeah. Exactly. So but at, at the same time, that's why I would do, and I would go through these types of check downs to try to see where the weak spots actually, when it comes, you know, rubber meets the road. And this is the kind of stuff I do. And this is what I do for all projects. This is an automatic company wide policy you know, until we're seven, seven, seven or higher, we find something else. So question, uh, question really yeah. quick on the rating. Um, cause one to 10, let's just be honest with ourselves here that most of us will probably rate ourselves higher than we really should on certain aspects. Uh, right. do you have some metrics? So like five is like a, uh, you know, that you want to, I'm sure in a worksheet or something that you have for yourself, but like the increments of, so people kind of know, okay, maybe I am actually a two and not a five on this thing. Well, I'll say this, like five, like for me, I I don't have like specifics on stuff like that because I don't get that granular on these things because I inherently like I'm brutally honest with myself. I was going to say, you're just very honest. (laughs) Yeah, I, I, I I mean, I'm just, I'm just ruthless because like all I care about is results. I mean, like I'm a good guy. I love to laugh and have fun, but when it comes to like it's it's very ruthless on point, you know, because I don't want to let anybody down that I'm working with, and I always work with somebody, so I have to be ruthless on myself. So what I I pretty much do is, I consider a five like we've done this before, but we haven't quite got the mojo down yet, and and it's 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 about it's more about confidence because once you've done mm-hmm. something once, it's not hard to get the first one out the gate, but then as soon as you analyze it. Um, You know, we use some of Russell Brunson's stuff. We use a guy named Jermaine Griggs, uh, who's out actually your area of the country. I think he's up in uh, like Orange County. Really good guy. Okay. Uh, Good Infusionsoft, uh, real big automation guy. I think uh, whatever, I forget his website off the top of my head. But um, we've used both of those systems and kind of integrated it into our templates. Um, And so what I kind of do is like five, we've done it a couple times. We don't have the mojo yet. Like I would say a seven is, hey, we got a template that we've tested and consistently are improving on. And then like a 10, it's like, Hey, like we write a KS. Yeah, we write a KST and we're going to crush, you know, like, I mean, it's, it's like that. That's, that's the feeling I get. It's really like, I don't look at like, oh, what's the difference between a five or a six? Because like, then you're, you're, you're missing the point. It's like principle over the actual, you know, cause there's no objective, like what's a five or a six or a right. seven or whatever. Right. And that's just kind of how I think of it. And you kind of know, like when you're honest with yourself and, and especially when you're focused on results and you're not like addicted to the rush of trying new things all the time. I mean, you kind of transition out of that phase of, uh, a newer entrepreneur, 
uh, to someone who's like, okay, look, I want to produce this much money. I have a goal every month and et cetera, like that. When you actually run a business based on metrics, you'll kind of know this inherently. So like I noticed for me, um, I, I just said this and I, I don't want to butcher my own quote, but, uh, <laughs> if it's, if it's easy to run, lots more will get done. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's kind of how I, I run things. So when things are easy, I find like for myself that I get like, you know, every, every time things get easier, like I don't increase incrementally, I increase by an order of magnitude. Mm -hmm. Right. So like with webinars, it's like, okay, what's in the way of this being easy? Um, and I'll just start listing bottlenecks. And that's how I actually go from like a five, six, seven, like when I buy somebody's thing or I consult, I always kind of say, well, why am I not feeling in flow with this? What's confusing? What's what's the problem? And then I'll go hunt. So then I go bird dog for someone who's already done that. And I can model and say, hey, man, you know, with webinars, like I'm really having trouble filling out like my decks, like, you know, my webinars, like I just hate PowerPoint. It sucks. You know, mm -hmm. I'm slow. Do you have a way to kind of like 80, 20 this so I can get it done and make it look nice, but not be like a fancy PowerPoint expert. And usually you hit somebody up and they're like, oh yeah, dude, blah, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. and they shoot oh, yeah, you a yeah. video or something and then you're, you're done. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's how I, I implement this. Cool. So what I want to do real quick is I want to yeah. kind of do a, a, a real quick recap of your sort of three step process here. And then, um, Joe and I sort of have some, some slightly off topic questions that we're going to dive into with you. Um, that we're going we're to start doing on, on future episodes as well. But so just the quick rundown of your process here. So step one, we're going to list out, um, uh, we're going to list out these three things, right? One, how yep. is this, this, this new company going to get customers? One, how are we going to convert them or, you know, two, how are we going to convert them? And three, how are we going to fulfill on that? Right. Yep. So that's exactly. step one. Um, any, anything that I'm missing about that, or is that pretty much the, the, the quick overview, just kind of, that's the quick overview, creating a list overview. of those three things, how we're going to get customers, how we're going to convert them and how are we going to fulfill them? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So phase two, we're going to rate the probability of success of each of these ideas. Yep. One to 10, one to Keep 10. So we're going to go it. through all th basically the, the list we just created in step one and kind of work through the probability of each of these. Uh, yeah. One, we suck. Never done it before. 10. Like I got this on lock. Got it. That's, that's it. Yeah. That's the Perfect. idea. Cool. And then that, that final phase is they've, you gotta be ranked seven, seven, seven across, um, customers, conversions and fulfillment. Yeah. And then you don't take anything on. And if, if you're not a five, if you're not a seven or higher in something, all you got to do is go buy or borrow someone else's experience, buy or borrow. That's or the, borrow. the two B's buy or borrow. That's so some great. examples yep. of that, let's say, um, how will get customers, um, you know, what, what is one way to, to buy or borrow just kind of, um, so, so with getting customers, you know, like, like if you're, if you like, let's say, you know, you're, you're, you're like, Hey, I want to do email marketing, but maybe you don't have a great list. So you might go pick up somebody's course or hire a coach on like how to run Facebook ads and build a list. Mm -hmm. Uh, if, if you do have a list, but you're not very good at sending traffic with it, maybe you buy some or hire somebody or buy a course on email marketing and how to get more people to click on your emails and care about what you're saying. Uh, build a better relationship. So that's where the buyer borrow comes in. But it's, it's, you know, what I find is that when you ask about that and you say, well, what's in the way of me, you know, getting really good at this, what am I confused about? And you get very specific, like, oh, I don't, I don't really know how to write emails consistently. They take me, you know, four hours to write an email. So you might go out and find a course on like cookie cutter emails where you can get like practice and more reps down, or you hire a coach who can help you write faster, you know, without writing those like 20 page long emails that some people write that nobody reads. Right. Right. So it's, it's the more specific you get on why you're not a seven, the more you can actually go buy and borrow someone's experience. And, and the funny thing is the more specific of a question you get with this, like if I hit you up and say, Hey, you know, Matt, I'm trying to like get, you know, KSTs out the window. Like, do you have like a guideline for how long they need to be before you actually link to something? Oh no. Or I might say, Hey, I'm trying to figure out how to get good images for my, my KST. You know, do you, do you have any sites that I could find for like Im stock images for, for the site mm. or, or something like that? You're probably going to be like, Oh yeah, dude, go here. This is where I go. I buy them all here. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas if I say, Hey, how do I do a KST? You're going to be like, ah, I don't know. Like I'm going to here, go read my blog post. Mm. Right. Like you're not going to get into sure. detail. That's, go buy issue that's, number one of the evergreen profits letter. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the probably legitimately what I would tell would people the if they want an in-depth answer on how to build a KST. Yeah, there I taught you go, it. Man. I taught it. There you go. I don't need to repeat myself. <laughs> awesome. So quick question. Uh, I was thinking about sure. this as Matt's little son is looking at us through the window. Um, is how do you implement this in your personal life? 
or do you? Uh, I, I absolutely do. Um, so, so I don't obviously use like LCF cause I don't need like lead generation right, in my yeah. life for a good thing. Um, but what I, what I really do is <laughs> we have is friends I'll, that still do though. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what's funny, what's funny about it is the biggest part where the translates out of this system into like personal life or your health or whatever is I always like to try to get things down to like three key factors. Um, again, it's 80, 20, um, you know, so you really answer, you know, really get in and, and when you really know a subject, you'll know there's only three or four variables like health. It's like, okay, you eat good, you have a decent exercise plan, you drink plenty of water and you sleep and odds are you're going to be in the top 10% of people healthy wise, right. right? If you eat good, and all those things, right? So there's four key factors there. So that's where I, I always go. But then like, I'll ask myself, okay, well maybe I don't know a lot about sleep and I end up staying up till four in the morning every day and I get up at seven and I'm do- tired all the time. So I, I might be a three in the sleep department. Hmm. So then I'll say, well, why am I struggling with sleeping? What do I need? Why well, I have this, 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 and this, or, you know, I, I, my mind races at night, you know, cause I get nervous about what's going on the next day. So I have trouble sleeping. So then you might hire a coach who is like a sleep therapist, hmm. you know, to go from a three to a seven, you know, and, 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 you know, that's, that's where it wouldn't be maybe triple sevens. It might be four sevens, you know, and that's the kind of stuff where the, the whole point of the set that one through 10 part is one to get brutally honest and then also see like, okay, what's the things in the way of me being higher. So like, you know, I, I'm very big on instead of saying, Hey, I want to end up here. I need to grow and learn a bunch of stuff. I'm always saying what's in the way of me already being there. Right. Whenever I have an out- outcome. So it's it's like a reverse reverse engineering the outcome. So like I believe honestly with all of my being as a person that I have everything I already need. I just don't know it yet or I'm, I've got stuff in the way that's preventing me from like achieving or seeing what I already have. So like, mm. you know, the reason I'm not a billionaire is because there's things in the way. I mean, that's a, a ridiculous example, but it illustrates the point. Maybe it's because I don't know what those guys are doing to build businesses that big. You know, it could be a million reasons. Mm-hmm. But when it's something specific and you say, Say like, well, I want to sleep well. I need to go re- read books. Well, no, that's not what it is. If you eliminate the factors that are in the way, which is a very 80-20 type concept, you know, you rack the shotgun, as Perry Marshall says in the book, uh, you'll find that there's only a couple key factors that are getting you away from what you want, whatever the topic is, whether it's, you know, finding a good spouse or, you know, having a better marriage or being healthier, whatever it is, there's only a couple things that are in the way. And the more honest you are with yourself, you probably already know what they are. Most people actually do when I bring this up. And most likely not- it's not a big radical shift anyway it's usually just a small ah. tweak ah yeah it's like hey go to bed earlier don't drink caffeine after four o'clock maybe stuff like that i mean right. you know it might take a while getting used to like i mean like a couple of years ago i lost a ton of weight by getting rid of sugar and for me it was uh not drinking sodas and like going you know i started out hour by hour because i used to love and be addicted to coca-cola oh, and man. uh <laughs> and uh you know i would stop i would stop drinking coke for an hour and then i made it two hours and then it was three hours and then four hours and so on and so forth and then i tracked all my food you know i i, I wrote down every single thing i consumed and i was like man this is gross yeah. i don't want to drink coke anymore. and boom i, I stopped doing it right. so it's little things cool little things did you want to hop into a question here man yeah i want to well i i I think we're ready to shift gears a little bit into sort of our final sure. questions. Let's just sure. jump around. That's how we do All it. All right, anyway. cool. So <laughs> this is this is a question that we want to start asking our guests, and you're our first guest that we're experimenting with this question on. Ooh. Ooh. Question, yeah, so. question scary, man. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's the question. What is one thing that you feel that you are world class at that has allowed you to do what you do uh, in your business? Like, what is the, what do you feel is the one biggest sort of X factor that you have going for yourself over sort of other entrepreneurs? Uh, I I'm the best alchemist. I can take two things that people don't see related and figure out a way to relate them together in almost like a neural network, uh, and come up with ideas and synthesize stuff out of thin air. So if you give me, if you give me an audience and a problem, I can create an offer within an hour uh, that would solve that. Like, so I, I'm an alchemist. So everything I do, I'm not actually very good at anything. Um, to be real honest with you, like as far as like technical things, like you know, I'm not great at WordPress or I'm not great at you know recording videos. I'm always the last guy to learn how to do certain technical things or whatever that most people associate with marketing. But what I am good at is seeing value where nobody else does. You know, I see the diamond in the rough. And I mean, it's it, to me, it's as crystal clear as night, you know, crystal clear as the sky being blue. Like I just look at stuff and see things nobody else does. So, so when I walk into businesses, is that, yeah, is that like an awareness thing? 
or I, I, oh, it absolutely is. It's, okay. it, and it's also it's also looking for the best in people and the things. So like, you know, I'm, I'm inherently an optimist, but I'm also very pragmatic. So those two things put together make me see things that nobody else does. So then like if I come in, like if I was working with you guys for a day and just watching, there'd be things that I would just notice that you guys probably because you're in it every day. Mm-hmm. I'm able to really kind of be that like uh, observer fly on the wall, whatever you want to think of it like and just kind of float there and see what's going on and say, well, what if we did blank, blank and blank? And I ask things a certain way so that, you know, I can kind of inceptionize like ideas into people's brains and then they make it their own. And so then I, you know, that's kind of how I, I negotiate and get everything that I want is it's always like, you know, I mean, even like with what I do with the newsletter, like I want the newsletter. I always, you know, take my goofy pictures with it and I do it for a reason because I want it to have that association of like fun, valuable, easy to implement, you know, and right. it's I'm, I'm completely aligned with you guys. So I do that on purpose so that if someone sees my Facebook post. Whenever, if they don't know you guys, maybe necessarily or know you very well, then they're like, "Oh, Brad thinks these there guys are pretty cool," yeah. you know. Boom, right. You know, <laughs> you know, these guys are like Brad. You know, fun, <laughs> happy, nice guys. You know, so it's it's like that. But I'm an alchemist, 100, awesome. percent not yeah. better than anyone. And and yep. just to give some like context around why I was asking that question is sure. I want I want people who listen into our podcast who listen to sort of your business and go, "Oh, th- so that's what Brad does." Um, how do I do what he does? I I'm, I'm inspired by him. I'm excited about what his business is. How do I put myself in a position where Brad is right? So by asking the question he has asked, it kind of points people in a direction of, if you want to be where Brad's at and you want to do what Brad's doing, here's kind of what he feels is the X factor that's gotten him to where he is today. Right. So that's kind of the, the context behind why I asked that question and how I think that would benefit the audience. Um, sure. So with that in mind, what mm-hmm. you just said that you're good at, you know, being that alchemist, but being that person who can find two seemingly unrelated things and tie them together to, you know, make a business out of them. What would you say would be something that someone should try to learn or research or dive into to, to sort of acquire a similar skill set? Well, it, it really is simple and, and it starts out with the LCF. Like I actually have a lot of content on LCF because that's like one of the core mental models that I teach people like when it comes to business. And I mean, I've, I've owned restaurants, I've, I've sold cruises, I've done a lot of things outside of, you know, the internet stuff that people know me for. Um, and I consult with a lot of other companies outside of IM and, and whatever. So I don't really list those for various reasons. Um, but one of the things that everything I, I look at when I look at a business is, is always like, is always LCF. If I can't find the the LCF or you can't tell me what it is, then you don't know what the heck you're doing. And we have a bigger problem of what you think the problem is. Mm. So like the first thing I ever come in with somebody, as I say, LCF. So like, let's say you're an ad agency guy and you're like, Oh, I don't want to be an ad agency guy. Cause I don't want to do a service agency anymore. Cause I'm sick of, you know, dealing with customers who pay me late or something like that. You know, you might say, okay, well I can get traffic. So maybe you would partner up with somebody who knows how to convert and uh, convert people and is like a salesman. And then you find people who have problems products that are already fulfilling and, you know, customers are having success with and you drive the traffic. Your partner is the sales guy who can convert those people into customers. And then the guy you, you work with a third person who actually delivers the goods on whatever the problem that you're solving, that products, uh, blah, whatever problem that product is solving. So, so the thing is, is that when you, when you look at business and you, you say, how do you implement like what Brad does is, you know, one of those three things you need to become good at. If you, if you're good at one of those things, you can make as much money as you want. If you can get two of those things like lead generation conversion or lead generation of fulfillment, you can be very rich. If you can get all three, you can be ungodly wealthy. And that's like, that's what you see people like, you know, Warren Buffett kind of wealthy. They own all three very well and they're very successful and they have a lot of leverage as well. That's the other thing when, you know, wrap around this is leverage. So, um, that's the biggest thing is, is, is specialized. Don't, don't try to be a little bit of everything partner with people who have the other stuff that you have. Cause it doesn't matter like if you do it or somebody else does it, that's the other thing too. Like I don't do everything. Uh, I don't believe in doing everything. I give away a lot of percentage of businesses, um, so that I can focus on the couple things that I'm good at. And then that allows me to scale. So instead of one deal, I have 10, Yeah. but I make more in absolute terms. And relatively speaking, I give up a little bit to get a lot more smart. So that's yeah. really what I would say. There's yeah. an analogy too. There's something I heard recently where you shouldn't try to be the hammer, you know, or try to try to basically create yourself as multiple hammers looking for the nail rather than, you know, you should be one really freaking good hammer and looking for all the nails. So just being good at really one skill set 
Like that sure. is your absolute superpower. And then yeah. you're going out there and this is what Warren Buffett's all about. He's constantly reading, constantly learning and looking for that perfect deal because there's always opportunities and shit around you flying around. But your your task is to be diligent enough and, and hold yourself back enough for that one perfect thing that you sh- you could just crush. Uh, yeah. Let's uh let's t- uh, switch a gear very quick um to a few last questions just to wrap things up. Sure. So is there one piece of software or a website or some kind of app that you use on a daily a daily basis that's either essential to your business or to your life that you want to recommend? Um I have a lot. I I really have a lot. I mean, you know, it, it's funny cuz like Asana runs a lot of our stuff. Asana, I mean, we use yep. Slack uh, Asana, we use Slack for, you know, team communication. A lot of that's automated by my partner, so I don't even handle a lot of the VAs anymore. Um, he handles all that stuff. Um, I'm a big Google Docs guy. Like it's weird. Like I I, I wireframe pages in Google Docs, like using their drawing functions. I mean, I because oh, cool. yeah. I really can't I really can't do anything. So like you know between Graphic River or or Thrive theme or what is no th- what is it the Thrive th- the marketplace yeah. Envato all Envato, of Envato. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all those sites, you know, like Graphic Rivers and all that stuff. Like I just take that stuff and I start fiddling around because when it gets past beyond typing and typing and taking screenshots, I, I really I don't have those skills. Right. So I have to like draw boxes and, you know, I'll go Google image searches and stuff. So I use the most rudimentary tools in, in marketing and I just find like ways to use them 100 ways instead of like learning one thing for one thing and so on and so Got forth. It. I use. Yeah, that's it's, it's that's funny. Um yeah, I mean, we, we actually have a very similar approach. Like if you put a gun to my head and said, what's one tool that you had to use on the Internet and I'm taking everything else away, mm-hmm. it would probably be the Google Drive suite of tools. Oh, yeah, I mean, I use the Google Sheets. I use Google Docs. Like our business is run in that sort of Google cloud environment. So that's what we're looking at right now. We're with the you street. there. And yeah. I'm very old school, too. I take a lot of handwritten notes as well. But um <laughs> well, yeah. And then there's that. I mean, like I, I, if you saw my office right now, I'd look like, you know, instead of, you know, Howard Hughes with his weirdo stuff, like I, I'm like Howard Hughes with legal pads. Like I got like oh, probably nice. like, like yeah. 20 legal pads of like little ones, big ones, white ones, yellow ones yeah. all over the office. And I got a big bin of them over here. I, I, I buy them at Costco, uh, like a, like a manic That's psycho, <laughs> you know, but I, I go through them. I just sit out on the porch and, you know, have a, have a beer if it's the evening, have some water or coffee during the day, and, and I'll just sit out and doodle. And I, I draw out a lot of things by hand. Like I flow chart a lot of things mm-hmm. and then draw arrows and then I test things and, you know, I explain it to people verbally. And if they don't get it, then I'm like, okay, well, maybe I need to re- redo this somehow. So, yeah. yeah, that's how I do. I'm very ghetto, like 1950s style technology, <laughs> except typewriters. Keep I've it never simple, had a typewriter. They, Keep it simple. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, we got we got about two more minutes left. So, um, rapid awesome. fire, last couple questions here. Sure. Um, what is, what is one book that you reread each year? And it doesn't have to be a book. It could be a documentary. It could be uh, a training course you go through. Something. What is one thing that you reconsume every year because you find it that important? Uh, uh, I would. I there's a lot of them. I have a list of them on my my iTunes. But uh, it's it got to be, be something uh, that rises to the top. The first uh, out, one that out, comes to out, mind, yeah. Outwit, outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. Outwitting the Devil. I have not read that. I, one. I haven't read that one either. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Get, do not read it. Listen to it on audiobook. The voice actors, are, it's an interview product, so it doesn't land like the, the art art style. You have to listen to it verbally or it doesn't land the right way as if you're reading it because it's an interview between oh, cool. Napoleon Hill and the devil. It's a really neat concept, but uh, the actors they chose are like out of this world for the narration. So it's it's literally like, oh, my God, this is, could be a movie and it would be amazing. So, I yeah, get the, audio book. How yeah cool. get the audio book. Awesome. So, yeah. All right. Last question. Uh, yep. Let's see. Oh. This is an easy one. This is my favorite question to ask anyone. What's the one question that we, or really anyone, should be asking you that most people don't? I would say that anytime anyone approaches me, the question you should ask me is, is what would make this a win-win deal? Hmm. Um, I'm always looking for win-win deals. So like, if you want something from me, uh, I don't mind giving it to you. In fact, I want to give it to you. That's my mentality. Cause you know, the more you give, the more you get. So if you ask me for something, all you have to do with me is, is ask me what I need and, and, and be willing to trade value for value. I don't look at the price of things. I look at the value of everything. So what might be valuable to me might be easy for you and vice versa. And so we pair up and a lot of values created because we solve each other's problems. So just ask, you know, how to, how to create the win-win deal. Hey, let me ask you a a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. Um, How do we create a win-win deal from this conversation? 
uh, that that's actually really good. So so you know I'll I'll, I'll be uh, shameless and and say you know eventually I want I want uh, I want to have a repeat episode here and be like a <laughs> guest expert like you know Howard Stern has his couple extra people in the there studio all the time. I want to be like the third person who uh, does content with you guys regularly you and want to uh, be our Baba Booey. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just want to. I just want to do more stuff with you guys, and we'll, we'll create some content and promote each other. So yeah, that's that. the win-win deal. I awesome. think that's a deal. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So yeah. this is this is literally the absolute final question. Um, <laughs> we promise. <laughs> I promise. Uh, where where do you want people to go after listening to this episode? Um, you mentioned. Uh, let's see. What was eighty twenty eighty twenty product creation dot com? Um, yeah. Is that where you want people to go and, and check you out yeah. after they listen to this? Yeah, go go there. I'll give you guys a link for a special something something that I'll make for the listeners of this, so you can put it like in the show notes or something like that. Um, cool. I don't have the actual hyperlink right now, or I would say it verbally, but uh, I'll, I'll create something for that. But right now, just go to eighty twenty product creation dot com. Check out my stuff. I'm gonna have a lot more offers there uh, coming up over time. I got a list of things that that I've been creating for a while, and uh, we'll get them out there. And and it's all stuff that you can implement. I'm all about implementation, not about fluff. So if that's what you want, I'm your guy. Awesome, you are the man. Thank you, Mr. Brad. Rock on. Thanks awesome. for joining us. You rock. Dude. Absolutely. Right. See ya. Great chat. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much for tuning into this episode of the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast. Now, if you don't know already, myself and my partner, Joe Fear, every single week we put together this killer weekly newsletter that's completely free. If you go to theweeklyprofit.com, you can get on this weekly newsletter. And what we do with this newsletter is we scour the internet. We read every piece of content, listen to blog posts, uh, check out new software and tools, and we distill down the best of the best into a weekly newsletter and deliver it directly to your inbox every single week. So head over to theweeklyprofit.com and make sure you're signed up to receive that weekly newsletter. You're going to love it. Thanks so much again for listening to the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. We'll see you in the next one.